We installed the MSYS2 system for Windows. We installed Visual Studio Code for Windows. And we configured the terminal. Terminal, new terminal, opens in CSH shell, and by default in your Windows home folder. Visual Studio Code is an editor, not an IDE. So there's no create project. But what we can do is open folder, go to a directory where we would like the project to be, and create a new folder. I'm going to call it project and select it. And it will now open in the Explorer on the left. We can see the option new file, new folder. Let's create a new file. Call it main.cpp and write a very small C program. So this works. We can see that the colors are based on the syntax of C and C++, so that works, but if you add a few characters here, it does not detect that this would not be appropriate include file. For that we need an extension called IntelliSense. Go to extensions, and on the popular is the most one of the most popular ones, the C, C++ IntelliSense, so install. It is now installed, so let's go back to the file. And now we can see these wavy underlines with the text by running the compiler that this is not correct. So I could find these compilers because we installed the MC2 system in its default directory. So it's best to leave it at that and then it automatically works. So IntelliSense works. We can compile it, for example, by opening a terminal and type the compiler commands. But once you have many of these files, it's easier to have a make file. So there's an extension for that, C++ makefile, this one install, and it's now installed. It added its commands to the command palette, so go over here and command palette, or remember the control shift P on the windows also opens it. So many of these extensions add their commands to the command palette, we can see them over here, make in a project. We're going to do a C++ project, and it added a default make file and two directories. Because we chose the C++, we can see that the compiler is automatically set and some compiler options. Now if you start out with coding, let the compiler help you. So switch on debug, switch off optimization and add some additional warnings. The load flags you can use, for example, to add libraries like laypack and blast and you would add these on the load flex line the app name we could leave as it is because we chose the c++ the extension is set to cpp and for the header files it will be hpp and expects all our source files to be in the directory source and it compiles the objects into the object directory so what we need to do is this file needs to be under source, so we need to drag it into the appropriate directory. So make sure you move it to source and not to source include. So this is correct, move. Open the terminal, and we can now type make, run the app, dot slash my app, and we can clean the project with make clean. So these are the customary terminal commands, and that means that this workflow is that you edit the files via Visual Studio Code, but you do all the compilation and running inside the terminal. It would be nice if there's also something like a right click run or a play button or run button over here. And that is what the next extension does. That's called code runner. Let's look for it and install. So it's now the right click. We see the run code and we have an option over here, the play button. It also runs code. We can select, depending on which file is selected over here, which code is actually run. By default, Code Runner uses the output and not the terminal. And we need to change it for two reasons. Output is immutable. And sometimes you would like to provide input to a program. So that needs to be done not via the output, but via the terminal. But also the commands like make and all the MSYS2 system is inside the terminal. So let's fix that. Go to 
here settings search for code runner and here we have the option run in terminal so set this to true and while we're here also set save all files before run to true and this one to true so that means once you press the play button it will save the files before it actually does the command also set ignore selection to true this will avoid temporary files which interfered with the make system we have here the executor map so click on edit in settings and here we see the list of commands that code runner associates with certain files at the top of the file we see the options that we set before for the terminal we set here four options to true for the code runner. The executor map determines what is run once you run code on a specific file type. So for example, the CPP, right click run code, would select and run this command. So we can modify this. For example, we would be able to right click on the make file, add that and run a specific command. The way to do that is to go into this file and just select what you would like to run based on the type. So I'm going to add the make file type. And what I would like to do is cd into the workspace root where the make file is, run the make file or make the make file, and then run the executable, but only if the make did not have any errors. So let's test this. Go back to the explorer, right click on the make file, and run the code. It now opens in the terminal and we see that it runs the command. It does the make command on the make file. It compiles and if that succeeds it will execute the my app. So this is, is exactly what you would like to do. One thing is most of the time you have a CPP file selected and it means that in this workflow you would edit the file and have to go first click on the make file in order to run the code or press this button over here. So the easiest solution for that is simply have the same command for all the files that you can possibly select. So also for the C files, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to CD into the workspace, do the make and run the executable. And while we're here at the bottom, we see the Fortran files. So let's also do this for Fortran. Let's check that it works. The CPP file is selected. Click on the play button. And it now compiles and runs the code. Let's also confirm that if you have something syntactically wrong, if you try to do this, that it does not run the executable, it does not detect the error. And in that case, you can easily select that the compilation were wrong and that you're not running the old executable. So this should now work again. Compile. Okay. So this is a nice workflow. You can either edit the files and use the terminal and type in the commands over there. But for starting students who don't want to um, use all these commands and simply want to run it via the graphical interface, you can do that by simply clicking on the play button. In the next video, we're going to set this up for Fortran.